it is my prayer that you will have a blessed day today, my dear friends and brethren in the Lord. Good morning and welcome to our God's Word for today, devotional. Thank the Lord for the opportunity once again that we can journey in the book of Mark together. Let me read our text for today in Mark chapter 6, verses 1 to 6. He went away from there and came to his hometown, and his disciples followed him. And on the Sabbath, he began to teach in the synagogue. And many who heard him were astonished, saying, Where did this man get these things? What is the wisdom given to him? How are such mighty works done by his hands? Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, and brother of James, and Joseph, and Judas, and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. And Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor, except in his own town, and among his relatives, and in his own household. And he could do no more mighty work there, except that he had laid his hands on a few sick people and healed them. And he marveled because of their unbelief. And he went about among the villages, teaching. This is the first account where Jesus had a rejection from a community, his hometown in Nazareth. Jesus returned to his hometown, and it's a very small town. Nazareth is not a big town. It's just populated with a few hundreds of people. It's located in the central part of Galilee, about 25 miles from Capernaum. He went to the synagogue, as was his custom, and he read there the scriptures. Instead of the religious Pharisees and the scribes, he faces uh, um, an opposition from his own townspeople. These people knew him since childhood. He was raised there from, from, from his um, childhood until he became, or he was 30 years old when he publicly um, pronounced his public ministry. And look at how they reacted. These people muttered and asked this question, where did this man get these things? He, it seems to them that Jesus was really completely different now. About his wisdom, they also asked, what is the wisdom given to him? Because he spoke with authority. And they recognized also that Jesus did some miracles, mighty works, when they said, or they asked, how are such mighty works done by his hands? And they could not believe him because in the back of their minds, it's vivid in the back of their minds that he is just the son of their neighbor, Joseph and Mary. As they asked this question, is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary and brother of James and Joseph and Judas and Simon? Are not this are not his sisters here with us? It means that how can they reconcile that he is the Messiah? when the family is just but ordinary and very common in Nazareth. They were not well-to-do. They were just ordinary people. Here, Mark did not record what Jesus was teaching or what was he talking about here. However, in the other Gospels, the book of Luke, Luke recorded that he read Isaiah 61 verse 1 to 2. We can read that story as written by Luke in Luke chapter 4, verses 18 to 27. And after he read this portion of the scrolls, Isaiah 61, verse 1 and 2, he asserted that he is filled with the Holy Spirit in order to bless and rescue the poor, the captives, the blind, and the oppressed. And without any doubt at all, this is a secret description that these Jews believe will fit for the Messiah. In short, Jesus is saying that he is the Messiah that they have been waiting for. But they could not just accept that. They were offended because he was just an ordinary person. He was just that little boy running around the community under the tutelage and parentage of their ordinary neighbor. Joseph and Mary, with many siblings also. So that in response to this, 
Jesus laid out a reality and said to them, a prophet is not without honor except in his hometown and among his relatives and in his own household. A prophet is not readily acceptable within his own household and within his own community. And this comes from the mouth of Jesus. Let's take note that people who are familiar with us may not readily believe us. It will take time. But it's not impossible, although they will feel with unbelief, but later on we know that James, or not James, but Jude, became um, um, a believer. He was a brother of the Lord Jesus Christ. We have to witness to our loved ones. We have to witness to our neighbors. It is our obligation that we are going to spread the gospel to everyone, especially to our members of our family. If we are burdened with other people who are, who are not related to us by blood, how much more to our families and clans, the members of our household and neighbors. So we should be burdened for their salvation. Remember, salvation belongs to the Lord. Yes, it's hard, it's difficult, but it's not impossible. Let's remember the power of the gospel. The gospel is still powerful unto salvation to those who believe. It's our obligation that we are going to spread and proclaim the gospel to every one of them. So our encouragement for today is this, that if we face opposition and rejection from the members of our family, let's look unto Jesus. Even Jesus himself can identify because he was rejected. Thank the Lord for he can identify with our pains. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 15 says that we have a high priest that can identify with all our pains and sufferings and, and every details of our struggles because he was once tempted in his life, but he did not commit any sin. That's why we can go to God in Christ. We can go to Christ because He can identify with us. We can ask help and grace in times of need. For we have a high priest who can identify with us. Who oh, may we will be encouraged today to continue praying fervently and consistently for the salvation of our loved ones. We we have to continue to Plead before God. Salvation belongs to God. He's not willing that any should perish. Let's continue to commit that God loves them, that God sacrificed for them, and that they can too repent of their sins and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved wonderfully. Let us pray. Father, yes, this is the truth and a reality that we are so sad that even the very people whom we love or are close to us sometimes are hard, Lord, to believe the gospel message. And help us, Lord, to maintain a good testimony to them. Lord, because um, they, they knew who we are, what are our backgrounds, what who we are before we became Christians. So they cannot believe that the changes that we have are lasting, and if we really are real. But thank you, Lord, because you can move their hearts through the power of the Holy Spirit. Lord, may you just continue to save our loved ones, those who are close to us, those who are members of our families. May you save them. Lord, we believe that you are gracious and loving, Lord. You are not willing that any should perish, but they too also should come to repentance and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. In his name we pray. Amen. Thank you.